Galaxy Studios in New York. It's Those ones at the end are always so sad. No! Oh! Some people wait too long. There'll be someone like 45 minutes from now. Oh! oh! Then they'll be beaten senseless. All right. Welcome to the show this evening. Ooh, it's a good show tonight, huh? <laughs> Rub on that lotion and prepare for a good show. I don't even know what that means, frankly. Oh, wait, you could. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Great show. Excellent show. Much to talk about here at the top. Big news from Baghdad. You want to hear this? Okay, I'll tell you anyway. That's one of you. Uh, I got one of you behind me. No, this is big news. Yesterday, Saddam Hussein's daughter told reporters that her father is still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, her exact quote was, somebody returned that tie I bought for Father's Day. That's how she found out. Yeah, you'll enjoy it later. The, uh, it's like a fine wine. It'll hit you later on the ride home. The, uh, the owner of a major New York bookstore says that copies of Senator Hillary Clinton's new book are, quote, flying off the shelves. They said, yeah. Yeah, mainly because she's been throwing them at her husband. That's the main reason, yeah. Just chucks them, they hit right off the head. Great. All right. Now oh, it's summer here. It's summer here, as you can tell. Frank Keating, the former governor of Oklahoma, caused a huge controversy this week by comparing the Catholic Church to the Mafia. Yeah, experts say if Keating isn't careful, he could end up sleeping with the loaves and the fishes. That was pretty interesting. I like that one. Uh, it's been reported that the sequel to the Scooby-Doo movie that's got your attention now. <laughs> I know my audience. Good, it's coming back! It's been reported that the sequel to the Scooby-Doo movie will feature a cameo by American Idol winner, Ruben Studdard. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, during this scene, the gang finds out Ruben ate all the Scooby snacks. That's actually what happened. They find out and he's... All right, let's discuss tonight's show in a calm, orderly fashion. Uh, amazing lineup this evening. He's got a brand new MTV show called Who's Got Game? Basketball legend Magic Johnson's yeah. on the show. We also have from his uh, new MTV show, Tom Green's here on the show. Yeah. There you go. That's a good lineup. And a uh, very funny comedian, Jim Gaffigan, on the program tonight. He's always good. And right over here, a Jimmy Vivino and a Max Wanderson. Jimmy! Good show tonight. 
Yeah, great, okay, thank you. <laughs> Shout out night here at the show. I wanna hear myself later on TV. Ah! It'll be too loud in that bar to hear me, I'm telling you right now. All right, now, uh, we have an amazing show this evening. And a pretty amazing thing happened to me yesterday. I want to mention this quickly. We scouted out the Beacon Theater yesterday, which is where we're going to hold our 10th anniversary show this fall. The Big 10th, huh? Pretty exciting. Yeah. Man. And we're on the way back. And I went with the writers, and a bunch of us are in a van. And I'm sitting in the front of the van on the passenger side, and we're all riding back right here to Rockefeller Center. And uh, I look over to the side, and I notice that I'm stopped at a uh, stoplight, and the car next to us, right next to me, is this black Mercedes, and the guy driving it is smoking the biggest joint I've ever seen in my life. But just driving. He's just driving along the road, smoking a giant Cheech and Chong joint. And I couldn't believe it, because he's just there, his windows are down and everything. He doesn't care about maybe getting pulled over or anything. So I just roll, we have like tinted windows in this van. I just rolled down the window and I leaned down and I said, hey dude, don't hog that joint. <laughs> just to see what he would do. And the guy recognized me, was totally freaked out, first of all, that I had seen, but then started to say like, hey man, he start, our car takes off. He starts to follow us and he's, you know, probably high. So he's driving a little funny and he starts shouting, I want your autograph. And I'm thinking, I'm not gonna be part of this crime that's going on. <laughs> I don't want the police to pull this guy over, start looking for evidence and see, I support what you do, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> right there, so uh, we pretty much fled. But I admire that guy's guts, just driving around the city, probably pulling up next to cops, like, hey, hey, ha, 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 and then taking off. I admire him, he's got guts. He's doing, he's living his dream. And that's what it's all about here in America. Now, folks, we all had a, gotta mention this, we all had quite a scare last week when a new virus started making headlines. I'm, of course, talking about the monkeypox virus, a virus most of us have, uh, well, we'd never heard of it before, and which initially frightened us. Well, folks, the danger has apparently subsided, and our trumpet player, Mark Pender, has asked if he could sing a little song about the whole situation. Now, I thought that sounded like a good idea. So, Mark, take it away. No one had ever heard of you, and then the next day, you were front page news A strange disease that would kill us all We all had the monkeypox blues Some thought you were terrorism No one knew just how you spread But one thing was for sure, yeah With monkeypox we'd soon be dead But then, but then the news started clearing the fog uh, you were caused by a freaking prairie dog You're less of a threat than pubic crabs All you ever caused was some finger scab Monkey pox, you don't scare me You're not even caused by a monkey Screw you, monkey pox Oh, monkey pox Screw you, yeah ah! That's enough. Thank you for your opinion. We appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Thank you, Pender. Give him a hand. Pender, everybody. That's a great song.